We're here with uh, Dr. Francis Kim, an associate professor at the University of Washington, to discuss his pre-hospital study titled, Randomized Clinical Trial of Pre-Hospital Induction of Mild Hypothermia in Out-of-Hospital Cardiac Arrest Patients Using a Rapid Infusion of 40 Degrees Celsius Normal Saline. Welcome, Dr. Kim. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about the background uh, behind uh, therapeutic hypothermia and uh, what led you to uh, select this type of study to perform. So most uh, hypothermia now is initiated in the hospital after hospital arrival and has been shown to increase neurologic outcome and survival, especially if people have ventricular fibrillation. However, animal models suggest that early cooling right after return or spontaneous circulation may improve outcomes further and may be even more beneficial. In order to do pre-hospital cooling, um, there are a lot of different technologies available but the easiest, most feasible, and um, generalizable form of cooling is just a rapid infusion of cold normal saline. And this was thought to decrease temperature very rapidly as soon as possible after return to spontaneous circulation. So we, underdid, we uh, undertook a randomized clinical trial to determine whether pre-hospital cooling using cold normal saline could improve hospital survival as well as neurologic outcome. Briefly, uh, tell us about the methodology, patient population and so forth. So we did the study in Seattle and surrounding King County, and any uh, successfully resuscitated patient by paramedics in the field were screened for eligibility. Um, if they were eligible, basically if they had returned to spontaneous circulation and they had esophageal temperature probe and they were still unconscious, they were eligible to be part of this study. So the study included all cardiac arrest rhythms? Yes, we included both ventricular fibrillation and non-ventricular fibrillation, which includes PEA and asystole. And what did you find? So we found that the intervention of rapidly infusing cold normal saline did not improve survival to hospital discharge, nor did it improve neurologic outcomes uh, in this population. And this was true both, both for the patients that had VF as well as non-VF. How many patients were included in the study? Uh, we randomized about 1,364 patients. Uh, about 40% were VF patients, and the other 60% were non-VF patients. And how did you assess neurologic outcome? Um, we reviewed hospital records at the time of discharge and classified patients as being uh, no impairment, mild impairment, moderate and severe impairment, impairment or comatose and we glean these from a review of hospital records. So this, uh, I'm sure, is going to be very disappointing to many people. Um, how do you interpret these findings uh, in the context of where we are today with therapeutic hypothermia, and uh, what kind of recommendations do you have in terms of the next most important questions to study and how we should move the field forward? So the first thing to keep in mind is that we applied the hypothermia after ROSC. So some of the animal data suggests that maybe hypothermia should be applied either during ROSC or resuscitation or immediately a few minutes after a return of spontaneous circulation. I think our study, um, there's some delay in terms of administering the fluid and whatnot, but we applied the technology as soon as possible. So I think some questions that still remain to be answered there are other technologies available to even cool during uh, resuscitation and other cooling methods may be more effective than simply using cold fluid. Were all of your patients, uh, uh, did they receive uh, therapeutic hypothermia on arrival to the hospital? Or did some of them just get pre-hospital cooling but not get hospital-based cooling? So that's a very good question. Um, all the hospitals in, that participated in our study at the start of the study had protocols for cooling once they arrived to the hospital if they had ventricular fibrillation. And one hospital in our area only cooled non-VF while the others didn't. We didn't mandate cooling in the hospital, but most of the hospitals already had these cooling protocols available. So of all the total enrolled patients for ventricular fibrillation, 77% went on to receive hospital cooling. 
as about 50% of the non-VF patients received hospital cooling. Well, this is, uh, you're to, first of all, you and your uh, co-authors are to be congratulated on an extremely important study, uh, one that provides us with new insight uh, into this uh, area and uh, gives us direction for the future. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.